Director of the movie Fuel, Josh Tickell, talks with Green Edition editor John LeSage about what's going on with the development of alternative biofuels, such as ethanol and biodiesel, and why it's taking so long to see much change in this discourse-heavy industry of fuel. From a science perspective, corn ethanol is a very simple process. You take a starch, convert it into sugars, and then create an alcohol. It's, it's a process that we've been doing for as long as human beings have been making beer. So we know how to do it, we know how to replicate it, we know how to scale it up, and we know how to make it very predictable. Uh, the issues with corn-based ethanol are many. So there's a push towards cellulosic-based ethanol. Well, cellulose is anything that gives plants their rigid structure. So whether it's wood from trees, grass, that stands up straight, or hay, or something in between, all of that contains cellulose. Well, cellulose is basically hydrocarbons, but it's a very dense, complicated hydrocarbon. So to break that down to starches, which we can turn into sugars, which we can turn into alcohol, is complicated. And to make it scalable is also complicated. To make it replicable is also complicated. So there are only a handful of functioning cellulosic ethanol facilities in the world, uh, less so in North America, less so that are actually in production today. And what plants are they coming from? Uh, cellulosic ethanol plants, you know, they, wood chips, grasses, you know, those seem to be the, the two directions. Mm -hmm. you know, for a while the push was towards switchgrass and now it's towards something else, but it's, it's kind of irrelevant, the source material, as much as it is the, the science. Because until that, that, until that science is totally rock solid, reliable, and you can install it in any given ethanol facility, you're, you're still in research and development phase. And then there's the next generation of uh, facility which, which can really occur with ethanol facilities, and that is actually taking the entire enzyme out and replacing it with a dark algae, an algae that can be grown without sunlight, which is technically not algae, but it's still a single-celled organism. That's another generation of ethanol, which is probably going to be algal ethanol or something to that degree, a microorganism that can better the job of enzymes and can get us to that alcohol or to that synthetic fuel even faster. So that's kind of the pathway that ethanol will lead. Well, the biodiesel industry as a whole has kind of fallen over. I mean, there were a hundred and something biodiesel facilities. We're down to a handful of functioning biodiesel facilities today in the U.S. Reliability of those facilities is good because they're the ones that really know what they're doing to the, for the most part. The issue with biodiesel now comes, it's, there's a gap between biodiesel and the next generation, which would be advanced diesels made from organic substances, algae diesels and all that. There's a time gap and there's also a technology gap. So today we have biodiesel available. It works in most diesel vehicles. Uh, we have a V10 Tourag that we tow different things to events with. That runs on biodiesel just fine. But if you go buy a new Volkswagen Tourag with the V6, they don't recommend using biodiesel because of the high pressure common rail injection system and because of the exhaust urea injection. So neither of those systems are technically biodiesel compatible. So there's been a schism between the biodiesel world and the car world. There's also been a schism between the biodiesel world and the environmental world. A lot of environmentalists are very down on biodiesel. Uh, you know, the reality is biodiesel is a bridge fuel. It's a, it's a fuel that's available today. It still works in trucks, a lot of cars, boats, buses, and airplanes. Whereas some of these high-tech fuels are still coming down the pipe. So you've got to make this decision. Do we go with biodiesel because it's practical, it's available, it works, we can use it today? Or do we wait and hope at some stage that one of these advanced diesels is really available? And I think you've got to do a little bit of both. I don't think you can, you can be uh, in the mindset that the perfect fuel is going to happen at any moment and therefore do nothing. And I don't think you can be in the mindset that biodiesel is perfect, therefore don't push for something better. You've got to kind of do a little of both. What's, what's the, for the stations that you mentioned that are still in operation, what's, what's inside the biodiesel right now? 
Uh, the majority of biodiesel in the U.S. is still soy-based biodiesel. It still comes from leftover oil from the processing of soybeans for animal feed. Biodiesel is on a similar pathway. And, and interestingly enough, in our, in our culture, we never argue with technological developments when it has to do with computers or processing speed or even horsepower with vehicles. What we tend to argue with is if we should have development, how it should occur, when it should occur, what it should look like, when it has to do with fuels and energy, rather than just getting along with the development and having it happen. So that social dialogue, that discourse, tends to really slow down what should be a very fast development process where we should be seeing these next generations of ethanols, biodiesels, synthetic diesels, synthetic gasolines, we should be seeing that those next generations coming at breakneck speed. The only thing that slows it down is the amount of sort of inertia that we tend to have when it comes to energy. Because the technology pathway is very clear, it's there. It's just up to us to get on that path and actually activate those technologies.